Thanks all for coming. Welcome to uh, EY Seren. So my name's Chris. Um, I'm the product design director here at EY Seren. Um, and I've been doing this job for about 20 odd years. It's a long time, lots of different companies, um, ranging from design agencies to in-house jobs. Um, but in the last four years, I've really focused on the sort of really big consultancies. Um, so I've been around quite a few of them. Um, and one of the things that has been happening in the industry, and I'm sure you're all aware of this, but we're starting to see um, you know, the big consultancies acquiring some of the design agencies that we've known for many years. So we just look at some of the examples. We all know Fjord were acquired by Accenture. Um, Adaptive Lab down the road, anyone know them? Yeah. Uh, quite recently uh, acquired by uh, Capgemini to join the Idean brand. Uh, Bio as well, quite well known. Uh, been acquired by TechM. And of course, Seren. We were acquired four years ago by EY. Um, so it's quite a big change. This is happening all over the world, not just in London, but it, it, it's quite a big change that we're seeing. Um, and what I thought I'd do today, I'm going to be quite controversial because I do work for EY, is to try and explain why I think this is happening. I'm going to try and do it without talking about money, because it's not just about making lots of money, because we do make lots of money. Um, and I'm also going to avoid the words design thinking, because I think that's just totally overrated. Um, so I'm going to try and describe this, and I'm actually going to try and describe this in three words, okay? Um, and the first word I'm going to use is the word change, because I think that's what UX is all about, change. We make change in businesses, we make change to products for customers' experience, but also if you look at the big consultancies, that's also what they do. They manage change um, in, in, for the organizations they work for. Uh, whether that's kind of change in sort of regulatory requirements, change in technology, change in society. They're managing change uh, across whole organizations. Um, and I really think that's kind of what we do as well. Um, and particularly if you look at the kind of new world we live in. So all of these companies, none of these were around 21 years ago. I had to, I had to Google that, by the way, to see how long <laughs> Google had been around. It's actually much longer than you think. Um, but these are kind of, this is the new world we all live in. Um, and these companies that, uh, that they see themselves as digital first and, and they wrap themselves around the customer. Very, very different to the traditional organizations we see, some of the retail banks, some of the uh, big consumer organizations and, uh, and other old fashioned, I call them dinosaur companies. Um, but those dinosaur companies, that is the client of the big consultancies. You won't find companies like mine working for these companies. We work for the traditional big dinosaur companies that are trying to change. So change is what it's all about. Um, but like I said, you know, us designers, we make change too. You know, that's, all, that's essentially what we do. Whether we're changing products or services, we're making change. Um, and if we look at the organizations that were changing those products and services, we also change those organizations. We make them, we bring sort of being customer first to them. We bring a data-driven approach. We bring them design thinking, but I didn't mention that. Um, so yeah, we're all about sort of giving them these new approaches. So we're essentially doing the same job as the big consultancies. We're being, bringing change. Um, however, if, if change was really easy, we'd all, all the organizations would be as big as Amazon and Facebook. Um, we'd all be rich as well. Um, but change isn't easy. And the reason change isn't easy is because of my second word. And the second word is risk. Risk is what makes change hard. Um, so risk brings uncertainty. And when you look at big, uh, big organizations, the dinosaur organizations, the thing you realize when you start to work with them is big organizations are all about the career game. Everyone's on a career path. Everyone needs to move up that ladder. So taking chances, taking risk, making change is very risky for people's jobs. And if they feel their job is at risk, they will simply avoid making the change. So you get lots of resistance against change because of this word risk. So it's a lot easier for these organizations just to basically not change and stay the same. Typically, we see them stay the same until people can retire, and then it's someone else's problem. Um, so organizations reach out for external help, and that's where the big consultancies come in. So they can't do change themselves, so they hire a big, a big consultancy to come in and help them manage that change. Um, and you know, we come in and, and, and do the same thing. So designers manage risk too. So we just do it in a completely different way to the way management consultancies work. Um, and the way we manage 
or manage risk within these organizations is with my third word. So we build confidence. If you're confident about something, there is less risk, so it's easier to change. Um, so this is what, um, this is essentially what big consultancies do. It's also what designers do. We bring confidence along to de-risk the project to enable the change to happen. And if we look at kind of the difference between designers and management consultants, so this is where we slightly differ. We all do change, we all manage risk, we all build confidence, but we do it in different ways. And if you look at a typical um, management consultant, they always take the approach of knowing the answer, right? They go in there with very smart people that went to very big universities and they come in with solutions to the client's problem. Designers, on the other hand, we go in not having a clue what the solution is. We just have a process to find out what the right solution is, and that's all about asking the right questions. So this is how we kind of differ, and this is really sort of how, well, essentially why these big organizations are starting to acquire these design agencies to acquire the process of figuring out the right solutions when you don't have the right solution at hand. So I'm gonna try something a little bit risky. I've never done this before. I'm actually gonna draw you a diagram. So, and this is something I do with clients quite a lot. And we take it, that's, that's not really, very well placed. Is that in the camera? Ish? Okay. So I've, I've started with a graph here. Um, so this is what I like to call the knowledge curve. So if we, if we put knowledge on the, on the, the y-axis, So we got knowledge going up. So the higher you go up on the chart, the more knowledge you have. And of course, knowledge is confidence. That takes away the risk. And on the x-axis, if we put time, so the further you go out, the longer the project takes and you know, the further you are into the project. So when we start a project, where do you think we are in terms of knowledge? Can anyone have a guess? Right at the bottom. We're down here. So we start with no knowledge. And when we're at the end of the project, where are we? right at the top here. So the knowledge actually looks something like that. So as you go through the project, the further you go into the project, the more knowledge you get, the less risk there is in the project, the easier it is to make change. So if you take going in with a solution, so you know, being on this side, knowing the answer. So when you know the answer, you kind of think you're starting up here. So let's say we come in with the answer there. Now if we look against our knowledge curve, we draw that graph off there you can see that we start off below and it's not till further in the project that you actually figure out whether you were right or not. So all of this area here, this is the risk that you need to manage. So this here is like a, an assumption or a guess or you know, an experiment that we want to run. Um, and that's essentially what a project looks like. You know, but designers start down here, management consultants start up here. Sometimes we put ourselves up there, but that's just an assumption because we know we're wrong. Um, and that brings me on to my next diagram. So how do you find the assumptions that you want to test? So how do you know what the right answer to go in and test with? Um, so this, again, is an exercise I run with clients. Um, and we start with a, a little matrix like this. Um, and we start in the first section by saying, what do we know that we know? So we ask the room, OK, what things do we know about this project? Okay, and lots of people put their hands up and say, we know this, we know that. Um, and usually then I'll ask them, do, have we got some evidence that shows that to be true? And if we've got evidence, we can say that's a fact. Okay, so we place that in this, in this section here. Okay, we know that to be true. If we don't have evidence, it's an assumption and it actually goes over here because in this side over here is what we know we don't know. Okay, so there are our assumptions and that's what we're trying to build up here. And if we look at the other sections, I like the other sections. So this is what we know, uh, now what we don't know, we know. I'll get this right, hopefully. So it's quite interesting what we don't know, you know. It's quite an interesting thing to ask a team. It's typically someone will put their hand up and go, oh yeah, we did this in a previous project last year and we found this out. So as soon as you've asked the question, what do we not know that we know, straight away we know something and can we ask if it's, if it's fact-based or if it's uh, an assumption. And then the last one is, what do we don't know that we don't know? They're the big risks. So what is it that's going to topple our project? What's going to um, make this project fail? 
So these big risks, we need to identify them. Again, as soon as we don't know, we don't know. As soon as we know it, it goes up to the top. And so do we actually know it to be true or do we know it to be not true and as an assumption? So what we do here is we're just building up a set of assumptions in here. Okay, and then what we have to do is take those assumptions and prioritize them. So we look at them in terms of you know, how big is the risk? What will happen if this ha ends up being the wrong thing or you know, if this risk ends up being true? Um, and then we weigh that up against, again, what's the impact if we happen to be right? And it works out for us. So you've got a way of sort of measuring them. And of course, then you can play them on that, on that knowledge graph. Um, I hope I'm, I'm ahead of myself here. So. Um, so once we've kind of prioritized the risks on here and um, decided which ones that we should, uh, we should play first, because one of the most important things that's not on there is what we need to do is bring the risk forward. So you should always play the most trickiest risk first. It's no good leaving it to the end. That's a disaster. So when you find out that risk is true, you've wasted a lot of time and you're probably in a really deep place of, to get yourself out of. So you always play the most riskiest first. Um, and I've got another diagram as well. I came prepared today. I really like this diagram. This is called the swamp. Okay, and every project has a swamp. Okay, so imagine this sort of, um, this is your kind of timeline of your project. And at some point in the project, there is this kind of really deep, muddy swamp here. That as soon as you take foot into that swamp, the whole world slows down. Typically, that's some kind of back-end integration work, anything like that. Anything that needs sort of um, legal and compliance sign-off or multiple stakeholders and two of them are on holiday. Yeah, it's this dangerous world of this whole world slows down and it's really hard to get back out of the swamp afterwards. So the goal here is to really stay out of the swamp as long as possible. So what can we do here to start doing as much as we can to de-risk the project before we take a single step into the swamp, because we know as soon as we step into that swamp, it's slowing down. Um, so yeah, that's how we sort of bring the risk forward and, and, and use, use our design process. And um, I guess that's the most important thing here. And that's what I see the big consultancies, that's the reason I see the big consultancies buying design agencies. They're not buying them for the skill of the people. They're not buying them for the brand names. They're buying them because we've got this repeatable, predictable process for finding the right solution for things. A predictable, repeatable process for managing the risk and for working out what the right solution is and then the right way to design it. Um, so that's very much how, why I think sort of, you know, these agencies are being bought out. It's certainly true here. Um, and I think as designers ourselves, this is our most valuable asset, our design process. And each of us will have a design process it's probably all different. We've all got different processes, but it's really, really important that you know what your process is. And hopefully you can document it and draw it out. Hope someone asks you, how do you do that? You can just instantly talk about it. Um, certainly when I'm hiring people, it's the number one thing I look for, for designers, is do you know how you did it? Do you know the process you went through? Is that the same process you used on the other project? Do you have a repeatable process you can use? Um, I think. Yeah, so what is a good process? So good processes should always focus on the problem, constantly questioning, are we solving the right problem? Do we know enough about the problem? They should all be evidence-based. So how do we get the evidence so that we know that we're right, so that we're tackling our assumptions? So how do we bring that evidence, whether that's data-based or research-based? Um, I think designers should always have strong ideas, but loosely held. So we, we're really brave and have great ideas, but we're quite okay for someone to tell us that's a load of rubbish or that's not gonna work. Or when it fails, so what? There's another idea we can come up with. Um, so we don't hold on to our ideas really preciously. You see that a lot in dinosaur companies and someone has an idea, they will not let it go. Um, and it, the most important thing, it needs to be predictable and repeatable. It needs to be something you can do over and over again from one project to the next. It might change slightly, you might adapt it every time, but it's really something that you can just, you know, you don't have to prepare too much before you start a project. You can just start there and go, I know how to do this. I've done it before. Um, so yeah, so to sort of sum up, uh, I think the reason that big consultancies uh, are acquiring companies like Seren 
uh, is because we give them a new way to create confidence and to remove the risk in the projects and create change in the organizations that they work for. Um, but there's something we get back from the big consultancies too. So as a designer, you know, I've been four years in the big consultancies and I've worked for three or four of them. Um, and the thing that I've realized is when you start to work with the big consultancies, you get access to much bigger projects. You get to have a word with a CEO of a company and they listen to you because you work for a big consultancy. Um, you can make change in these organizations. You're not operating at a kind of project budget level. You're not taking someone's budget before they run out at the year end. You're actually just working on strategic change in these big organizations that often go far further than the sort of individual products or services you're designing. Um, yeah, we get to work on the bigger problems as well. So problems that um, is something we're quite proud of here at EY Seren is we're working on a real big problems that tackle change in society. You know, looking towards the future and you know what what is things like you know how how is home ownership going to change in the future, and what what does the service and the products look like that service a new sort of type of home ownership. Um, so it's really challenging, you know, how people make the decisions that matter in their lives to make a really difference. It's not just about making money. It's not just changing organizations. It's about changing the world and making it a better place. Um, and the reason we, do all, we can do all of this is having that big name of the big consultancy over, you know, on a business card or above the door um, adds this a huge sense of trust. You know, we're trusted. We don't get things wrong in the client's side. We get things wrong all the time. But the, the client's perception of us is you're a big company, you're well trusted, everyone knows who you are. And there's a quaint, famous quote about IBM, no one got fired for hiring IBM. Uh, it's the same with any consultancy. We are well trusted within the, the boards and the, uh, the shareholders in these companies. Um, so some key takeaways. So I think you know, coming back to it, it's all about that process. Uh, it's all about focusing on the problem. This is not about going in with solutions. We're designers, we go in and we focus on the problem. And from focusing on the problem, the solution emerges for us. We should be bringing the risk forward. So how can we play the most dangerous risks in the project and do those first and avoid the swamp in doing so? You know, stay out of the swamp as long as possible. Uh, we should use short feedback loops constantly gaining evidence, so building that confidence uh, as quickly as we can to move up that knowledge curve as fast as you can, because the more knowledge you have, the less risk you have in the project. And lastly, I think this is for, for designers yourself, is absolutely know your process. It's the most important thing you know, um, and it's what you know, it keeps you in a job, it's what helps you get a new job, um, and it's where your value comes from as a designer. Um, so thank you very much.